Hello everyone, my name is Chilla and I'm a PhD student at the University of Queensland. First of all, I would like to thank my supervisors, Professor Sarah Dolnicar and Dr. Yayan Sun for their endless support, and none at least to Koti for providing a platform to present our paper titled Environmentally Extended Input-Output Analysis, an alternative approach to assess the carbon emissions of tourist businesses. We all know that tourism is resource intensive and it harms the environment. The tourism industry is the fifth most polluting industry. Globally contributes up to 12.5% to global warming and 8% to global carbon emissions. We also know that we have to reduce these figures. But the question is, how? To be able to reduce carbon emissions of tourist businesses, we first need to measure them and then develop practical measures to reduce them. Measuring carbon emissions is tricky because the carbon footprint of every tourist business consists of three types of emissions. Direct emissions, also known as scope 1 emissions produced on site by a business. Scope 2 emissions that are indirect emissions resulting from energy per cases and scope 3 indirect emissions caused by the upstream or downstream supply chain, such as emissions from waste generation, stuff travel to and from work, and the use of consumables. Tourist businesses are not experts in carbon emission calculations. They usually report and manage their scope 1 and 2 emissions because energy consumption and on-site utility use are easy to control and monitor. Scope 3 emissions, on the other hand, receive little attention, although they account for between 54% and 94% of emissions in the hotel, food, shopping, retail, and recreation context. So the starting point to reduce emissions is to identify an affordable and user-friendly tool to calculate carbon emissions. The traditional approach to calculating carbon emissions is life cycle assessment. Life cycle assessment enables us to analyze the entire life cycle of a particular product, process, or activity. Because life cycle assessment tracks emissions across the supply chain, it is extensively used in agriculture, manufacturing, and construction. Life cycle assessment also estimates other negative impacts, such as resource depletion, ozone layer depletion, acidification, land or water use, and the social impact of product supply chain. Despite these benefits, life cycle assessment has disadvantages when tracking scope 3 emissions. Because scope 3 emissions are generated by multi-layer production processes. A bath towel, for example, is weaved from yarn, which is spun from fiber that is made of cotton. The life cycle assessment would need to track how the towels are produced, what machines are used in production, how far they are transported, how much energy is used, and how the towel, yarn, fiber, and cotton are packaged. Tracing many layers of production quickly becomes unmanageable. So the main practical barrier is that life cycle assessment is complicated and expensive because it relies on extensive databases that contain the carbon emissions for the smallest of process components. Our study investigated if environmentally extended input-output analysis offers an alternative approach to calculate the indirect environmental harm related to consumption activities. The environmentally extended input-output model estimates the environmental harm caused by $1 worth of a product or service by tracing money flows through the entire supply chain. Environmentally extended input-output analysis is predominantly used at national level, offering the evidence base required for evaluating economic and environmental policies. Applications include global carbon emissions, ecological footprint, waste production, and water footprint. Compared to life cycle assessment, the environmentally extended input-output analysis is affordable and simple, yet covers the entire economic system. The fundamental difference to life cycle assessment is that the model calculates emissions based on cost data. If a business has financial cost information for a process, 
environmentally extended input-output analysis can easily convert cost information into greenhouse gas emissions. To be able to compare the two approaches, we apply them to one hotel room clean. We obtain the inventory of a hotel room clean from the manager of a five-star hotel located in an Australian capital city. We apply the environmentally extended input-output analysis using as input the cost of every process and product required to complete the clean. To obtain the life cycle assessment parameters, we had to rely on secondary data sources referred to as average data method. We did this because product life cycle emissions data for individual suppliers is not available in Australia and several products used by this hotel are imported. This further complicates the life cycle process tracing required to conduct life cycle assessment. To illustrate the problem, one sachet of instant coffee provided to hotel guests compromises of coffee powder from a mix of beans produced globally. We need to know exactly where the contributing beans are produced, the viticultural practices of coffee planting in those locations, how far the coffee bean has been transported and using which mode of transport, and how the coffee powder is packaged. This creates substantial barriers to perform the process-based life cycle assessment using commercial software products such as EcoInvent. To obtain reliable life cycle assessment parameters, we cross-check multiple sources like journal articles, industry reports, and compare the system boundary assumptions and inventory data. Then we determine the final emission values for each of the 26 items listed in the room cleaning process. Multiplying the total units used in hotel room clean with the corresponding emission coefficients, then derive the life cycle assessment result. For outsourced laundry services, the supplier directly provided their carbon footprint profile that was prepared by a consulting firm specializing in energy auditing. This ensured a high validity. Now let's look at the results of our carbon footprint estimations. In this table, you can see all components that make up a hotel room clean in the left column and the cost of each one of those components next to it. Then you can see the carbon emission calculation results for both methods for each of those components. You can immediately see that the total emission values at the very bottom are within 10% of each other. This shows that input-output analysis can be used instead of the more complicated life cycle assessment. Both approaches were also able to identify the most problematic areas. These were laundry and dry cleaning service, paper products, and cosmetics and toiletries. If a hotel would want to reduce its carbon emissions, those would be the main areas where this could be achieved. Environmentally extended input-output analysis is a promising alternative for calculating carbon emissions of tourist businesses because it's simple, it's affordable, and leads to very similar results as more complicated and expensive methods. Environmentally extended input-output analysis also points to areas with the highest potential for improvement and identifies the emission cost ratio of each input in the process. These two insights can inform product planning, carbon management and procurement policy that consider both cost reduction and sustainability performance. To sum up, environmentally extended input-output analysis provides an invaluable opportunity for small and medium-sized businesses to engage with a sustainability agenda via footprint analysis. So that concludes my presentation for today. Thank you for your attention.